Hey, hey developers, today I am gonna show you the new file uploader component that'll make it very easy for you to take anything you want and upload it to S3. So this is a project that I have been personally working on. I am an engineer at AWS Amplify. It's a React component, so it makes it really, really simple to take anything you want, any images, any pictures, and then upload it to S3. And so in today's video, I wanted to show you a practical use of using this file uploader component so I created a application using Create React App. It's protected by authentication authorization through our authenticator and Cognito. And so you can create a private photo gallery. And then we're gonna use Amplify Studio. We're gonna use a bunch of Amplify products and you can actually get started with this basically for free. So make sure you watch all the way to the end and check it out. And if nothing else, if you are watching right now, there's gonna be a link in the description to where you can download this component and try it out. It's in preview mode right now. So I'm looking for feedback on it. We're trying to make some more enhancements to it. Yeah, so check out the link in the description below and enjoy. To begin, go ahead and open up the AWS console and in the search bar, you can just type in AWS Amplify and go ahead and select the link. From here, just click on the new app on the top right hand corner and go to build an app. And then it'll ask you for a name. So we're just gonna call it file uploader. YT for YouTube and click confirm deployment. At this point, you'll be shown a screen where you can click launch studio, which will launch the studio. Inside this studio page, what you'll need to do is click on the authentication. So we'll need to create a new uh, Cognito backend. So we'll leave it the default, which is the email, and then we'll click deploy here and confirm deployment. When the deploy is finished, you'll see this screen, which will have instructions on how to download, your configuration into your React application. Before we get to this, we need to also set up our storage environment. So just click on storage on the left-hand side, and it's gonna ask you for a name. So I'm just gonna leave it the default. It's gonna ask you what we should do for signed in users or guest users. So I'm gonna just leave this all uh, for demo purposes that anyone that is signing in can upload, view, delete, and same thing with guest users. Then I'm going to go ahead and click create bucket and this will go ahead and deploy it. Great, so now we have created our storage and also our authentication. So let's go ahead and jump in the code here. Let's take a look at the code here. And first, what we wanna do is create a brand new React application. So we're gonna use Create React App, but you can certainly use Next or Vite if you wanted to. But I'm gonna use Create React App. I'm using the latest version of Node. I'm gonna do NPX, Create React App. And then I'm gonna use TypeScript as my template and that'll make sure that uh, if we decide to use types that we can go ahead and do that. Okay, great, it's installed. So now let's go ahead and install a few libraries that we'll need. So first, we're gonna do an npm i for npm install. We're gonna install AWS Amplify, which is our JavaScript library. And then we're gonna install AWS Amplify slash UI React. And this will install the libraries for our file uploader, as well as the authenticator that we're gonna be adding to this app. The libraries are installed. Now, if you haven't already, you'll need to have the Amplify CLI installed. And to do that, you'll do npm i tag g at AWS Amplify slash CLI. And this will install the Amplify CLI. If you type in Amplify, then you should be able to see if you have it already installed on your system. I do. And if you need to, if this is the first time running this, you'll need to run Amplify Configure, and that'll just make sure that you have the correct credentials using the CLI so that you can do some common operations. I've already done that outside this, this tutorial, so let's see, let's do the next part, and we're gonna copy this from the Amplify Studio page, and this will make sure that we can download everything onto our application so we can get all the files that we need so we can connect to our AWS services that we just created. Now it's opening up this page to confirm who I am. So if you aren't already logged in, you might have to log in, but otherwise you just click yes here and it should authenticate. And that's gonna ask us a series of questions. So I'm just gonna hit enter here. It's asking what type of, um, what we're using. We're obviously using JavaScript and React. And I'm just gonna hit enter all the way through here and this will go ahead and set up our project so that we can use it with Amplify. Okay, great, so now everything's set up with Amplify and now we can dive into the React code and get it working and create this app. So first, I'm gonna go into our, our Amplify index file, which are index.ts, 
TSX. And this is the file where we're gonna set up the Amplify configure. And this is going to configure it, it with our application. You can see here on the right hand side, we have this new Amplify folder. And you can see this file is called AWS Exports. And this AWS Exports has all the configuration for the Amplify, the AWS services that we created for Cognito and for S3 storage. So to do this, we're going to import it in. So we're gonna import in AWS Exports from, and we have this file right here. And then we're also going to import in our Amplify. So we're gonna call this uh, Amplify here, and this is from AWS Amplify, that library we've already installed. And then we'll do Amplify configure, and then we'll pass in the exports file. So off camera, I went ahead and started the server. I ran npm start, and you can see we're completely configured now with Amplify. So let's get the file uploader up and running. So I'm gonna open up the app TSX file. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this and save it. And what we really need to do here is we need to import in the file uploader. So we're gonna import in file uploader from the AWS Amplify UI React. And just to see if it works, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add in this file uploader. You can see here, there's a red squiggly line. We actually need to add some props to it, some uh, props that are required. So if we come down here, we can see here if you, uh, put your cursor over it saying it's missing this accepted file type props access level so let's add that so we need access level and what this access level is is it just tells the file uploader if we're going to be using it in a public or private or protected and for this case we're going to start off with public so all the files that we upload are going to go into a public s3 folder but later on i'll show you how you can do it with a private folder so i'm just put public here and the next thing that we need to add in is this, uh, well, we're gonna have to add in this accepted file types. And this is an array of files that it accepts. And you can also accept MIME types. In this instance, we're going to do here, we're gonna put image slash star, and that means you can select any images and they should work. And there's a couple of other props, and by the way, this is all listed in the official documentation. You'll have a link in the description below but we're gonna put variation, and this means that we can either have it be as a button or a drop. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like as a drop. So I'm gonna save all that, and this should refresh. And you can see here right now, it shows up, but it's not, doesn't have any sort of styling. So we can import in the default styling, so we don't have any issues with that. So if you go to you, ampersand UI react and then styles.css. This will install the default styles so that way it looks a little nicer. Cool, so you can see here we have the file uploader now displaying and it has this browse files here. So we can either drag and drop files from Explorer if you're on Windows or Finder if you're on a Mac. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click browse files and this will open up our file selection and then we can just choose a file here and it's only gonna show image files because that's what we selected. And you can see here, we have this interface. We can click this little button here and change the name of, name of it if we want. Uh, we can add multiple files. So this is the basics of how the file uploader works. Let's say you wanted to do a button instead. So you can change this variation to button. It also defaults as a button. And if we save this and refresh, now you can see it just has this browse files button and it does basically the same thing. It'll bring up our window here to choose whatever we want to choose. So I'm gonna put it back to drop for now. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna add in a few styling to make this look a little nicer. So first, uh, I wanna go in and create a new file for our layout. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna create a new file. And if this was production, I might wanna create a components folder, but just for now, I'm gonna create a layout TSX file. So I'm gonna import a few things in. I'm gonna import in grid. And this is gonna be from our AWS Amplify UI React package. So it's gonna allow us to create a really cool layout using this component as if we were using CSS. I'm gonna import in React from React as well. And now we're going to create this layout. So I'm gonna export this layout function. And it's gonna have one child, it's children, and 
children. It's going to be, uh, it's not going to be required. And we're going to pull out react dot react node. And then inside this layout, we're just going to return this grid. And the grid is going to have this children in it. So we have a bunch of props here that we can pass into it. So I'm going to put a gap, which is going to equals one rem, do template rows. That's going to equal auto one fr height. We're going to make this 100%. And then we'll do a justify content and that'll be center. Great, so now we have this new layout component which we can now use inside our app. So let's let's add that in there. So now we have this layout. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our index.tsx file and we'll import uh, inside here this layout from. Then we'll go ahead and put the layout in here and we'll save it. Cool, so now it kind of shrunk it down a little bit. And now let's see if we can add in a collection so we can display some pictures. So we'll go back, uh, we'll go ahead and go back to our app.tsx file and underneath the file uploader, this is where we're going to see if we can I uh, show a collection of items. Okay, so let's add some imports in and then we'll start building this code here so we can grab data from our S3 bucket and display it like in a photo gallery. So first, uh, I'm gonna import in use state and use effect. So that'll be a couple of our React imports. And then we're gonna import the storage from AWS Amplify. This is a part of the storage category and we'll need this to be able to manually list files from our S3 bucket so we can do uploads and downloads, uh, basically, so we can download them and display them. So I'm gonna add in first an on success handler, and we're gonna add that to the file uploader in a moment, and this on success means that any time a file completes its upload, it's going to trigger this on success handler. And we're gonna add a new function called fetch images which will go ahead and fetch the images on every time the success handler completes. So we're gonna add a, a couple of things here. First is we're gonna add this uh, use state for this images and set image keys, and then one for images. So we're gonna save some image keys so we can display some file names, and then we're also gonna save the images. And then the use state, it's gonna actually be a type S3 provider list option. We'll go ahead and add that in a second. So let's create this fetch images function. So in this fetch, fetch images function, we're going to await, and I'll make this a little bigger, this storage.list, and we're, I'll, I can put it private, we'll, we'll switch it to public in a second. And we're gonna run the set image key. So what the storage.list does is it downloads all the a list of images from your bucket, depending on what level you set and then it grabs the results, and then so we can set those results into this image keys. And then what we wanna do is this S3 images, once we get this, uh, this results, we're going to map it and do the storage.get. So the storage.list basically returns back a list of keys, and then we're going to use those keys to use storage.get to actually get each one of them. And then we're gonna set it. And then just so every time we start the app, we're gonna use this use effect and we're just gonna grab the images from there. So let me add this S3 provider list output item. And so this will set the, uh, the type, this, this image keys type, which will be an S3 list uh, output item. Okay, cool. So now we have the code in place to actually, every time the app loads, it'll go ahead and grab it. And I'll change this to public for now, public. So every time it loads, it's going to grab this fetch images, which is gonna grab a list of all the files. And then we're gonna use the storage.get. Now, one thing also to, to notice is it gets a pre-signed URL of the file or the object data. So this pre-signed pre URL is only good for a certain period of time, and then it downloads it to your system. And so we're gonna use that to download the file to our system. Cool. 
So uh, first here, I wanna make sure I add an on success handler. So that way anytime this runs, anytime a file completes, the on success handler will actually grab the images and display it for us. So the next thing we need to do is we're gonna add a new collection. So this is right here, collection. And this is a, a component type in our UI React, UI Amplify React library that makes it easier to deal with collections. So I'm going to add in, in here at the bottom, we're gonna add in a collection. And inside that collection, we have a few things. And by the way, this will return back an item and an index, which we can then use to do something with. And we can, um, we'll look at that in a second. So in this, we'll do maybe H1 for an item and just H1 for the index if we need it. But this collection needs a few things. So we're gonna pass into it uh, the items, which will be the images that's gonna be set. We're gonna type, we're gonna have it uh, a grid. Padding, we're going to have, uh, I don't know, two rem. And uh, I'm gonna add a box shadow to this. And I'm gonna copy and paste this for my other screen so I don't have to type it all in. Okay, and then we'll do max width. Uh, we'll make it 1100 pixels. Okay, and then we'll have a margin of zero auto. Justify content, we'll make it center. And then we're gonna have some template columns. So on different aspect ratios, uh, it just kind of adds like a responsive layout. So that way, as the, as the size of the window changes, it'll automatically change our, our grid here that we have. And then we'll add in a gap equals small. And let's fix this. Cool. So let's just see if this works and then we'll make it look a little nicer. So now we have this collection and it returns back this item and index and we'll be able to use this as our children here. So first I'm gonna open up the console just to make take a look at it. We'll open the console here and see if we see anything after we upload. I can make this a little bigger, I suppose. All right, browse files. I'm gonna upload this blueberry. Cool, then I'm gonna click upload files. You can see it uploaded really quickly. And right here now, you can see I have a big list uh, of information here of the whole file. So let's see if we can make this uh, actually show. So uh, this item right here, I'm going to uh, import a new import. It's gonna be image. This is another uh, the component from our library. Instead of this H1 here, I'm gonna add the image component. And I think actually I can just add in a source and this will be the item. And then I think I have to add an alt. So I'll add an alt in here. All right, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna refresh it, browse files. Cool, so you can see here, it automatically showed the image, right? When I refresh the page here, it says zero because that's index zero. Awesome, so let's see if we can add, make it a little bit nicer by creating a card for it. One more thing, we actually probably should add a key here. So we'll make this a div, if you're following along, and we'll have a key here, and we'll actually do like this. And we'll have a key equals the index, so we can delete it right here. And if we save it and we go back to the console that I was showing you guys before, so we go to console, We'll refresh it. Let's go and upload one other file. And then we click upload files. And cool, so now it's showing up as we expect. Everything's working fine. So let's go and add in, make it look, look a little nicer. For the sake of brevity, I went ahead and created this card offline here, but I'll explain what it's doing. So this is gonna be kind of our wrapper around all images that come from the collection component. And what this will do is we're essentially using our image, heading and flex and card components we're creating this card around it. Uh, we're using line height small, we're adding a, a border. And then we're taking the image, that same image component that we used earlier. We're just setting a fixed width and height to it. And then we're adding this style, this border to it. And then we're adding a heading, which is this image keys 
that we're passing into. And you can see it's a type S3 provider list output item, which is a part of the storage category that we we're using earlier. So let's see if we can add this into our app file. So instead of having this really basic div key here, uh, we're gonna create our own. So we're gonna create, well first I'm gonna import in the, the key. And I'll like, I wanna put this right up here. And so we'll import in this image card from uh, image card and right here, and we'll add this image card, but it does have three props that we need to add in. So first we'll put that key, which will have it equal the index. And then we'll need to add the image keys, which are those uh, image keys that we have. And then we'll have the item, which will equal the item. And then finally index will equal the index. Uh, and that should be it. We'll close it. We'll go ahead and close it like this. And just to give an idea of why I did this earlier with this S3, uh, when I got, grabbed this S3 image and I did the storage that list. So you can look at this result. It's basically an array. Inside that array, we have an E tag, a key, a last modified, and size. And so the key is the key that we need to be able to retrieve it from S3. So that's why we kind of pass that in there. And that key happens to also be the name of the file. So that's why we pass in the whole key there and then inside the image card, it, uh, it shows the name. So cool, so here it is. Now it went ahead and added this little border around. Here's a little green border. This text is really, really big. Let's see if we can use our Amplify theming to make it smaller. So Amplify has a whole theme system. I'm gonna create a new file called theme.ts. And what this theme, theme system does is it allows us to make general wholesale changes to the whole application, the branding, um, kind of all the defaults uh, theming that we have. And we're gonna do this using theme here from AWS Amplify UI React. And if you wanna learn more about theming, if you go into the, our official documentation, there's a whole theming section where it talks about uh, how we handle theming, um, how we use the theme provider, how we use design tokens to do everything. So I would encourage you guys to read that. But what we can do is we can export this theme here. We're gonna export const theme. And I always love TypeScript because now I have the type right here. I'm gonna call it uh, uploader, uploader theme. And then I have tokens and then I wanna do components and then heading. And we know this is the second heading and we know it has a font weight and a font size. So we'll do font weight here and then we have to put a value. Now this values, value, you can look these items up, but basically it's going to be font weight, if I get this right, font weights dot bold. And then the other one font size, also has a value. And this design token will be font sizes dot medium. Now that's not gonna change anything right away, but now we can import this theme into the index TSX file. So on here, we have this layout and we have this component, but what we'll do is import in a theme provider, which will come from our AWS Amplify UI React. And now we can surround our whole app by this. So I'm gonna put this theme provider and it'll need to take in a theme object, which we need to now import our theme. So we'll import, let's see here. We'll import in the theme from theme, if I did that correctly, and then we'll pass it in here. So if we did this correctly, it should show our new theme. We'll just import it in. This will just take a second. Oops, uh, I'm gonna have to move this theme provider up into the source folder, which I'll do real quickly. And then I'll save it. Cool, so you can see now our theme has been updated. The text is a lot smaller. And we can do all sorts of things with different brand colors. Cool, so now we can go and browse files. Then we'll click upload files. 
it uploaded successfully and it's automatically updating. So for this last step, I'm gonna add in the authenticator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna surround the whole app so only authenticated users will be able to upload files to this private S3 bucket. So inside our app here, we're gonna open up the app TSX folder. And then at the bottom where it says export default app, uh, we're going to import a new, uh, a new component. We don't need this image anymore, but we're gonna import in with authenticator. And then we're gonna surround this whole with authenticator with this app right here. And once we do that and this refreshes, you'll notice that it'll be surrounded by the authenticator. Cool. So we have this new option, the sign in and create account. Once again, we can use the theming to override this look and feel if we wanna make it look exactly like our brand colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new account and then I'm gonna log in. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and I'm just going to put in my email, password and click create account. Okay, so I went ahead and created an account. It asked, it's actually gonna ask me to verify my email. So I'm gonna put in the code that it sent to me over the over my email. I'm gonna click confirm and here I'm logged, logged in, but it's still just showing the public information. So I wanna make a, a couple of changes here. So on this page, I'm gonna add something called use authenticator. So this is a hook that we can use to be able to grab a sign out function that we can add to a button. So uh, I'm gonna add also a button here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna grab this const sign out. It's gonna use this use authenticator. And this has a little bit of an unusual syntax. Basically this makes sure that we don't have any problems um, it makes the program more efficient. We don't have any re-renders that it doesn't need. So I'm gonna put sign out here. And now this uh, sign out here, we can just go and add a button. So once you're logged in, we can, uh, someone, anybody can go ahead and log out. So I'm gonna add in this button here and I'll add in on click and it'll be on this sign out. So first we add that in here, it'll automatically refresh. And now we have a sign out button, which we'll go ahead and just add in sign out. And you can see here, we have a big old sign out button at the bottom that we can use. To make this private, we need to make a couple of changes here. Instead of having a public bucket here, we're gonna put private. We're also gonna do private here. And lastly, where the file uploader access level, we'll need to have this private as well. And that way this is all protected. So we'll go ahead and, and save it and we'll refresh. And we'll notice there's actually no files in here because we have no private files yet. So let's go and upload one. We'll click Brown, browse files and we'll choose this sheep here. And then we'll go ahead and click upload files. Cool, so now we have the file uploaded here and it should be only accessible if you are logged in. So, so if you haven't already, go back into studio and, and log back into your AWS console and we can take a look. So if we go back to file uploader YT here, there's a file browser and click file browser. You can see there's private protected public. If we go back to private and then choose our file, here it is. Here's the file we just uploaded and we can verify that it has been uploaded to S3 and we can see from here that it is looking good. So great, so now we have created like a private photo gallery using this file uploader component. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and also there'll be a link to this repo so you can follow along there as well. Thanks.